So I wanted to take us through a bit more of uh, the, when I do this at night, I get glare on my glasses. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, I wanted to take us through uh, just uh, some more aspects of the poem, just as kind of an exemplar, right? Um, uh, to give us some things to start thinking about, to give you some kind of uh, other approaches to, to thinking about the imagery and so forth. Uh, so, last time and on the Zoom call, we had talked about, you know, the opening cantos and the series of images and symbols, the mushrooms um, in the grass, the islands in the sea, uh, words in silence, um, companionship and loneliness, uh, love in its absence, right? Uh, life and death, right? That, that he's set up for us already. And we've gone, th gone through, um, I'm looking right now at, um, I'm going to focus particularly on, on, on Canto, starting on Canto 11 here, but in this time, you know, we know that on the plot level of the poem, uh, Gorchakov has informed, uh, as <laughs> ridiculous as it is, on Gorbanov. He'll be released at Easter time. Um, Gorbanov will, will have to stay in, in, in the, uh, in the institution. That's clear between the two of them, and they've had it out, in, in a sense, about that. Um, Gorchika, or Gorbanov is called in to the doctors. Uh, he posits himself, um, as a Christ-like figure. That's something, uh... That's something that, that you could think about, collecting uh, the, the religious imagery and symbolism in the poem. One thing we go through in Canto 10, that conversation on a porch, where it's not entirely clear who's speaking. One thing that I think is interesting to think about in terms of understanding you know, I propose the idea of the materialist and the idealist, which is not my original idea. I'm, I'm drawing uh, some interpretations from, I think, I think that one might come from Lev Losef, uh, but I think it's a good one and that's why I kind of use it. Uh, but from several different people that have talked about this poem. Uh, you know, we end with, the higher pitch belongs to Gorbanov, to Gorchakov the low, for what it's worth. Uh, and so, so thinking about what that might mean for the poem, so I'd like to turn to Canto 11. They've had their falling out, so to speak, and we've thought through the imagery of uh, this sort of dueling imagery, right? Of mushrooms and islands and speech and friendship and love and life and their opposites. Gorbanov has asserted back in Canto 3 that he needs an interlocutor, right? This idea that alone in the darkness, um, there's 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 a problem with parting, right? My lips divide in two and then could split into infinity, right? This idea of the necessity of some kind of interaction and in 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 a plot level way between people but in in an abstract way in the symbolic level of the poem between the materialist and the idealist the idea that these components the high and the low of the mind we require balance basically so what did you dream of this time nothing new then i won't ask what's this you feeling racked by shame or something suddenly no view it simply as a sense of measure tact how very generous what can I do? This place has gotten to me, and the fact, what fact? That I've landed here. Oh, you are capable of causing cardiac arrest. Just take your facts and go to, to, come off it now. We've got to interact, says, says Gorchakov. And who am I to you? I wouldn't know. No matter. So I guess you're leaving. When? Right after Easter. And from here you'll go home. They won't hesitate to take you in. They won't. Where do you live? The address? Oh, I never give that out to anyone. That strikes me as a lie, if you say so. Don't tell me fairy tales. But then again, you won't be coming by to visit. No, and why is that? Because the outcome's been decided. Then you're right. I 
think I am. You think so? Oh, I'm sorry. That popped out by accident. I've no right to dream of doubt. So tell me, when you're home, about the house, how do you think you'll pass the time? That's my concern. You're the one who thought we should interact, and yet your tone is hardly conversational. It's odd. It's just my nature. Well, an apple, then, to change your mood. Okay, a nibble. But I promise I won't take the goods and run. Hoist or heave, that's my kind of work. Believe me, pal, all others are superfluous. My eyes are being shrouded. Hoist or heave, hoist or heave. Oh, that's synonymous with all that happens to me now. Be brave. We promise not to drop you. We? What does we mean? Don't be afraid. Before I leave, I'll teach you palmistry. If that's the case, I turn my back on you. You mean that we've no friendship left? There's no more to discuss? You could be kinder. Evidently, this is what my genes designed. And here Gorchakov says, existence, though, determines. And Gorbachev keeps cutting him off. But, but if we can get through the sentence, existence, though, determines consciousness. Which I brought up is this, this, this materialist point of view, this ideology of the... Uh, of the Soviets, right? That our material existence and its relations condition our mental state. And then Gorbanov says, I'd take that sentence left to right. Meaning consciousness determines existence. So I know this sounds a little abstract, but I promise you this kind of abstraction is normal for 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 soviet thinking like everyday thinking and and writing i mean maybe not as obliquely as this but but this kind of this this abstraction on the ideological level permeates soviet life it's not unusual it's not just all oh, poets right <laughs> or something i take that sentence left to right so one of the things that that this poem is discussing is this argument in a way, it's like nature versus nurture, right? Um, evidently, this is what my genes designed, which, um, again, is 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 is, is biologizing uh, on on the part of Gorbanov, and and again, counter to Soviet ideology. He is anti-party in his way. Ah, uh, so you think I am a Jew? meaning literally in relation to, to the reading of the text. Um, this apple was plucked from the tree of knowledge by a Jew. No, it was Eve who did the plucking ass. Eve may have, but it seems he did it too. And this is actually a reference to Christ, who of course was Jewish. Um, and takes us back to uh, the canto on Gorbanov and the doctors, um, which might be a place for you to jump in from here. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But still, he was a genius in his way. He founded science, and he's got a name that's sonorous in any case. Let's try to skip the names. That palindrome would set them chopping off my hands today. You know, he too consigned himself to pain, and now he has whole peoples in his sway. Pan-Mongolism. There's a loaded term. He was condemned as well. You mean to say he was condemned to parting? Just condemned. But what is parting? Must we linger on this word? It's for my files. Elucidate the ways of parting. And of course, this has been a concern of Gorbanov's all along. Parting from his wife, parting from himself, parting, parting, right? Parting. They depend upon from whom one parts. That's what's at stake. Where you remain, can you remain as one named so-and-so in such a, such a place? And if from someone close to whom he's gone for and for how long, can you remain as one? Right? One whole person on your own. And Gorbanov can't. It's not clear Gorchakov can't. And if from someone close to whom he's gone and for how long? And if forever? Wait. You stand and gape into the dark alone. The sort of dark that lowered lids create for sleeping in. And you shudder now and then from grief. The darkness being real is clearly visible, though now you know there isn't any sea or chanterelle gone off the end of that stream of symbols, right? And even in the spring you think it's so? The springtime makes it easier, I feel. I doubt it. Doubt it gazing at the snow. You're like a thing extracted from a field. 
Unlike a gum, the earth's not bleeding, though. This evidently is as God has willed. And what does parting mean to you? Decay. Doors close behind you as you disappear. And he's talking, in a way, directly to Gordon. You know, they brought it to... Doors close behind you as you disappear. And if it's day, the brilliance of the day. And if it's night, at night the atmosphere comes into play. Perhaps a single stray light or a bench in some deserted square. He's speaking in Gorchakov's idiom now. Things. And does the memory of a loved one stay with you for long? You'd better be more clear. Well, after losing me, what will you say? In general, loss isn't hard to bear. If that's the way you feel about it, why go on about our friendship? In this instance, we're the better for the fact that we live here together at this little distance. The reason being that to really be, really to be, or better yet, existence, to really cease to be, non-entity will make my absence give for one who listens to the plain, its plain monopoly, its plain monotony. You mean, therefore, that you will be my silence. You see, we're sliding down, right, from mushrooms, speech, love, silence, right, the dark, and there is no sea or chanterelle. Jumping forward to Canto 13, Conversations About the Sea. Um, on page 204. My soul's too weak for calling. From now on, wherever fate sees fit for me to be, from paradise to squatting in the john, not painted walls but waves are what I'll see. And that's not bragging, Gorchakov. A man like me in such celestial disarray, well, what would he be pleading for? For one who hath the ears to hear artillery repeat of waves is far more pleasant than a tearful prayer that this cup pass from me. Right. What's wrong with me? Today I, cursing you, forgot that woodpile scenes details you ask about as I replay it in my head, my dreams, and in response I tried to speak my mind that dreams employ the heritage of the day, and then it seems you called my mushrooms islands. I replay how hard it is beneath our craniums, and now you see the sea to see to that I say absurd. Though yours has greater rights, the dreams are both the same, and sleep, the doctor's core, cure, the core of cores, and like in streams, we sink in it, we sink into the darkness. Right, again, we're, you know, things are going downhill. Fourteen. The eyelids. Close them. You see darkness, right? This is on top of 205 before we get to Canto 14. In light, too, is a rule, and suddenly you see your eyes shut tight a feature. One, a second, third, you feel your ears hum, your mouth's cold, the height of sky, and children running down the quay, a gull is catching breadcrumbs midway through its flight. Am I not there on that embankment? All I see, that moment, everything in sight is real, more real than you there on your stool. And so basically, Gorbanov is just retreating into his own mind. He's claiming he can't even see Gorchakov standing in front of him. But that's delirium, you hear. So look, we need a witness. Here, Babinov, you. Now in a robe without a belt or hook, I'll perch upon the stool in public view. Well, Gorbanov, you see me, right? I took no notice. Even of my long John you? No. I'll obliterate your portrait. Look here, Gorbanov. The sea becomes a stew now that the wind is kicking up. You snake, you hear? I've already answered no. So that's the way it is. Well, then let's use our fists. Taught. Blockheads must be taught a lesson. Take that. Well, now, can you conjecture whose hand hit you? Mine? Babinov's? In that session? Um, well, was it Gorbanov's? You refuse to blame me. You'd forgive my sins. Your ocean will burst the faucet soon, and you'll know whose. He, he. What? One thing to think about, that I invite you to think about, why is Gorchakov so mad? Where he hits him. And I like the little linguistic, but I think it's the laugh is actually, you know, we can read it as he he, but it's also he he going back to, you know, he said, he said, he said, he he, he said, he said. And the suggestion 
you know, Gorchakov screams, well then who hit you? Gorbanov. Right, this conflation of the two of them. What are you laughing at, you crashing idiot, you fool? Hey, what's the noise? Get out of here, Mikowitz. Right, someone finally on the level, again, on the plot level of the poem, someone finally is like, comes in and is like, what's going on in here? I'm the boss in here, and if a palace closed his eyes, the more so as it's night already, those around him should, I think, shut up. You flies. I slugged him. Well, because... Because he didn't close his eyes from pain. So now we have Gorbanov lying there in bed, eyes closed. Mikowitz, this other person, is here. Telling, you know, Gorchakov to settle down and leave him alone. Why, you know, why'd you hit him? Uh, because he didn't close his eyes from pain. His willingness to suffer. You know, part of this, I think, is surrounding Gorchakov's guilt, right? I find suffering easy to bear. Right, that he's going to bear up in this suffering way, in this, um, like the canonic Christ. Right? We've talked about that before, the suffering Christ. And Gorchakov's mad about it. Um, he's mad, you would forgive my sins. He doesn't want forgiven. Right? I mean, so these are things to, you know, think through. And they squabble amongst themselves. The, I hear the doctors. I'm in bed. And Gorbanov, don't you so much as sneeze. Just cover up and... But he's really dead. Asleep already. And look at the line break there. What? I hear the keys. Asleep? Impossible. You've cracked. I said shut up. You know, blah, you know, they're, just you try squealing, Gorbanov. But he's asleep. Someone tries to call Gorchakov. doctors come in the night clerk said he heard a fight blah 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 what's wrong with Gorbanov uh, he's asleep so get to sleep and don't disturb the peace we're on our way that's right bad little sheep we're going we'll hear houseflies buzz you'll be so quiet got it not a peep right. Gorchakov they're in your keep They're gone. Hey, Gorchakov, what's that? Your piss? Go. All right, let's close our little eyes. Hey, right, there's this kind of... These are the, you know, Mikowitz and Babinov chatting. Hey, look at Gorchakov, you guys. He's whispering to Gorbanov, his lips pressed close. He's trying to apologize. You're really sleeping? far as I can tell, you're really sleeping. How the strands are wound in knots. I cannot understand myself. For God's sake, please forgive me. Forgive me, friend. Here, let me fluff this battered pillow full. How's that? Myself and self are out of tune. Myself and self are out of tune. Alright? At the time when they move farthest apart in a way, they collapse together. There's some, you know, his lips pressed close. Right, those two halves of a whole that Gorbanov is talking about. The cleaved circle, right? And the two of them complete it. But forgive me. This is more than I can well perform. Now sleep. To speak of glances, one could not find such a pause on here, where all is obstacle and obstacles alone sleep, Gorbanov, until they sound retreat. I only want to guard your rest, to hell with it, with the alarms round. Though obstacles are new to you, I'm used to them. Forgive me for my bragging friend. Forgive me my disharmony at best. Sleep, sleep, and I will wait beside your bed. Not over you, not under, but here next to you. Don't care how many years they send you up. I'll wait to meet your opened eyes. What do you see? The sea? Two seas or more? You wonder wave-filled hallways? Fishes stare with dumb expressions out of every door? I'm right behind you, but from God knows where ten thousand bubbles bubble up before my eyes, and I can't follow, I can't bear the pressure. What? What's that? My mind's gone, or hallucinating conversation. Look here, down from the north, the wind's begun to roar, the pillows squash, the part has left your hair. It's not really clear what happens to, to Gorbanov here. Is he uncaught? Did he knock him out? Is he unconscious? Is he dead? Has he retreated in some way into himself voluntarily? Um, it's not clear, but we see Gorchakov's grief and sorrow. And here is the foreshadowing of love. Um, 
if we go clear, you know, he's leaning over the pillow, he's talking, I'll send, I'll wait for you, you know, this kind of trying to apologize in a way that it might not be possible to do. Um, you know, if we go clear back uh, to Canto 2, um, sorry, I'm trying to find the... And what is love? An end to loneliness. The very end? It's being able once to stand above the bed and, by just bending over in the silence, with your hands, brow, breath, touch life. He's bending over the bed, but it's not, si he's babbling. He touches the hair on his brow, right? The pillows squash, the part has left your hair. But it's not clear that's life. And so it's not really love. It's something like it. You will be my silence. So anyway. Not all of this is fully clear that I've said here, but more I'd like to point these things out to give you again a jumping off point for thinking these things through and then to hopefully talking about them some more uh, in our in our next zoom call um, and then just keep building off of them so that's a little more close looking at the text um, uh, seeking out symbols and chains of meaning and, and maybe metaphors and um, I will, I will see you later this week.